Hey gang, I'm in Minnesota right now, just north of Minneapolis at a place called White Bear Lake, a town called White Bear Lake, and we are at St. Mary of the Lake Cemetery here. And I want to thank Leanne, one of our viewers, for tipping me off to this story. It's a famous story, actually. It's a horrible story. I'm going to give you a warning right now. I don't want to ruin your day, so you may not want to watch this. I don't know when, but it is a horrific story of child abuse. Back in the 1960s, I mean, it's, it's an older story, but it's just terrible. It is a woman who was the stepmother, the foster mother, if you will, who was the devil incarnate. So let's take a walk to his grave at this beautiful little cemetery. And I will tell you the story of little Dennis Jurgens, the poor little boy that suffered at the hands of this very, very evil woman. It was Dennis Craig Puckett originally. He was born in Sauk Center, Minnesota. He was the son of a teenage Jerry Sherwood. And she herself was a ward of the state and of course she had a teenage boyfriend and at the urging of the authorities there they said you really need to place him put him up for adoption which she did they said he's going to have a better life a good life and he will receive good care he will be taken care of he will be loved well at first he was his first year he was raised by an elderly woman and she gave him very great amounts of tenderly love but then she had to let him go because there was a family it was the Jurgens family here in White Bear Lake who would get him and this was a family that should never should never have gotten him. Now Harold was an electrician and he was married to a woman named Lois. And Lois had mental issues. She actually 10 years before was put in a mental institution. She was receiving a lot of care and you know, back then, <laughs> care wasn't always so beneficial. It could be torturous. And yeah, she got the shock treatments. So they never should have, and the law was, you know, if you've got mental disability, you're not supposed to be able to adopt children. But somehow they got away with it. They figured it out. And so at one year old, little Dennis was put in the care of this family. Now they had another boy who was a year and a half older. His name was Robert, and he was a, a good boy. I mean, they were both good boys, but Robert was pretty docile. And Lois, with this personality, I mean, she was very volatile. The relatives were all afraid of her, her temper she would get mean and she would do some terrible things so robert obeyed but dennis was more of a boisterous child you know all kids are different as i always say you've got a brother and a sister can be completely different same parents because god wires you the way he wires you now, of course, in this case, they were both adopted from different parents, but still, Dennis was boisterous, and she did not like that. She did not like that because she was the dictator. It didn't take long before Dennis was admitted to the hospital for burns, burns to his genitals. Now, this was sexual sadism, but it was passed off as an accident. 
and the doctors went along with it. Oh, how do you get burns to your genitals as like a one-year-old child? Oh, it's an accident. He, I don't know, he was walking and craw no, crawling on the floor and he bumped into the stove and somehow he got up there and burned his genitals. Come on, guys. Now, she would get angered by his rejection of certain foods, which is actually normal with little kids. Completely normal. So you know what she would do? She would put horseradish in his food and she would force feed him. That's right. Then she would cover his nose and mouth until his face turned blue. And of course, this is gonna cause one to vomit, which he did. And this would enrage Lois even more. Oh boy. Well, what do we do next? Well, you're gonna eat your own vomit. So the little boy was forced to do that. She had this issue with fat and weight gain. Now, how are you supposed to gain weight when you're in a situation like that? In fact, it would later be said that he only gained three pounds from when he was one to the age of three and a half, which is when he died. We're going to talk about this, Corner would say. Corner would say later that he was at the level of a person that died from starvation. Lois would call him Sloppy Fat. That was his nickname. So what does a mother do when her son wets in his pants? Of course, you put a clothespin on his penis. Again, the coroner would later note that there were bite marks on his penis and scars all over his scrotum. Is it normal for children to wear sunglasses at the age of two when you're going out in public? Of course. Why? Well, it's to hide your black eyes. You know, from mom. And it gets worse. It gets worse, guys. Dennis would be tied to the bed to force him to sleep. He was tied to the toilet to force bowel movements. And Lois made no apologies about the way she was disciplining little Dennis. She was doing God's work. She was keeping Dennis perfect in her eyes. Now the boys were forced to recite the rosary and Robert complied at the age of two he had it memorized but Dennis had problems so he was forced to kneel on a broomstick until he could finally do it this sounds like Satan at work to me folks you just can't make this stuff up now neighbors and relatives knew what was going on at least very least they suspected it but they did nothing to help. Some say they were afraid of her because she, they thought she was capable of murder. So it was early in the morning of April 11th, 1965, when little Dennis could take no more his body, his soul, and that's when he died. Nobody really knew officially what happened because the cause of death was certified as peritonitis, perforation of the small bowel. Of course, we know, and people suspected back then, those were caused by blows from Lois. What does the medical examiner do? Nah, 
Why bother to try to really figure it out? Let's just mark this case as deferred. Official cause of death, deferred. What does that mean? That means I can't figure it out and I've got other stuff to do. So let's move on. It's interesting that in addition to the bite marks and burns, the coroner found those cuts and bruises all over little Dennis's body. Well, it turns out that there was some investigative work finally done. I mean, there were murmurs. And it also turns out that Lois's brother, Jerome, was a police officer here, and he inserted himself into the investigation, and he was one of the investigators. And what did he do, Jerome? Well, he did his best to interfere with the case and he maliciously destroyed evidence they would find out later. So of course, given that, there was not sufficient evidence to arrest Lois. Things were dying down. I mean, there were a middle-class family here, White Bear Lake. But again, there were still murmurs, but nobody did anything. Well, Dennis was dead, but what about Robert? You would think someone would step up, but no. There was enough outrage, I guess. They did remove Robert from the home, but it would be years later that Lois and Harold were able to regain custody of him. And shockingly, this couple, this couple was able to adopt four more children were from Kentucky. Now you talk about a breakdown in our civil services and we've talked about this before. After the adoption they started getting nervous. They had that experience with Robert being taken away. So they decided to relocate to Stillwater, Minnesota where nobody would know them. Now, when the children got older, they would give accounts on how they suffered under the horrible abuse of Lois. And this would all come out. But just to give you an example, she would slam the children's heads against a nail that was protruding from the wall. She would make them stand in the snow barefoot. She would shove a used sanitary napkin in their face. Finally, those children came together and ran away. They got help from neighbors and they got away. And what happened next? Well, what do you think happened? Lois and Harold lost their right to adopt more children. <gasps> really? Yes. Isn't that too bad? Boy, things were screwed up back then, and they're still screwed up. Let me tell you. Years later, Dennis's birth mother, Jerry, would seek him out. She had four children of her own, and she thought that, hey, maybe Dennis, we could get together. I'm sure the kids would love to see him, and Dennis would love to see that. Dennis, what, he would be in his 20s or 30s now? Let's seek him out. Her search led her to the cemetery, to his grave. So she called Lois. Lois was very cordial over the phone. She even offered to mail Jerry some of Dennis's mementos 
some of his toys, some of the things that she kept because she loved him so much and couldn't bear, she couldn't bear the cross of his death. But guess what? The mementos never made it. So Sherry called again. The phone number was disconnected. Somebody changed their number. Now this was obviously very suspicious. So Sherry started to get an investigation going. She first got Dennis's death certificate. Of course, she saw deferred. Deferred technically still meant that the case was open. So she went to the police department here and she also went to the media. And this time around, it doesn't appear that brother Jerome was going to help because it got big media attention. It made cover story. And eventually, from all the publicity, sickeningly, it's what it took to get Lois arraigned. So there was a trial, and one of the star witnesses was Robert, who is now 27 years old, testified against her. And here is where it came out. He said that when he was five years old, when little Dennis had died, he had witnessed Lois, his mother, throw the little boy down the stairs on that fateful day. She was now in her 60s and she was found guilty. She was found guilty, but she was only sent to prison for a short sentence. She got out after only eight years for good behavior, of course. She was on perfect manners in prison. No temper tantrums. No throwing things, no attacks. Of course, there's no kids there. Well, she lived her life out in seclusion back in Stillwater. Her husband, Harold, died in 2000. And get this, at the time of his death, they suspect, they suspect that she had poisoned him. And she probably did. So, she finally died in 2013. And I guess the only words I could say to that is, the devil went back to hell, went back down to hell. And that is where she is now. And where we are now is at little Dennis's grave, which is right here. Our little angel. Dennis C. Jurgens. December 6, 1961, April 11, 1965. That poor little boy, poor little rambunctious, full of energy, full of life. We wish we could have known him. We wish we could have known him now. He would be how old? 61, right? Yeah. Ah, oh, just breaks your heart. Well, I wanted to come here and remember the little boy. His story is not forgotten. And you can see here the people of, of White Bear Lake have not forgotten him. I hope he's playing with all those trucks, a little race car down there in heaven. Heaven, he's three years old, three and a half. 
Rest in peace, little Dennis. Rest in peace.